www.thepeopleforgeneration.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. What happens to people that do not really know God? Do they die and go to hell? That question is asked a lot because in our culture today, we don't like thinking that there is a hell. It's funny, though, because even little kids can look at you and say, how can there be a heaven and not be a hell? That doesn't even make sense. You know, so today, what we're going to talk about is hell and um, what kind of people end up going to hell and is it real and what's it like and so forth over today and tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit about that. We're going to open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, nobody likes talking about preaching, about teaching about this subject. It's, uh, it's very serious, it's a bit of a downer subject, it's sad, uh, but God, it's real. And uh, Jesus talked about it a lot, the apostles talked about it a lot, and I don't want to skirt over this issue. I would be doing a disservice to the Word of God if I just uh, ignored it and pretended it wasn't in there. So God, I pray today, tomorrow, as we talk about hell, that you will prepare our hearts, uh, that we won't be hard-hearted about it, that we'll hear the Spirit saying to the church, in Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Our opening song today, though, is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. When we come to worship, you know, we don't worship about, about hell. We worship Jesus. We worship God. We worship what Jesus did on the cross and his love for us. And that's what I want to think about today as we open up our services with the time of worship. I'll see you right after the song. When I survey the wondrous cross the Demands my soul 
Love demands my soul. My life, my own. Our scripture passage is Luke 16, verses 19 through 23. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed from what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. What this is teaching is not only did Lazarus die and open his eyes and was at Abraham's side, the rich man who didn't know the Lord and lived for the Lord died. And when he opened his eyes, he woke up and he was in Hades. Now Hades is talked about a lot in the scripture. It is the uh, dark side of Sheol. Sheol is the place of the dead. It's not just the grave. It is the place where the dead go when they die. Your body goes into the ground, and your soul would go to Sheol, the place of the dead. And those that walked with the Lord and had known the Lord went to Abraham's side, or went to paradise, and went over to that side. And those who did not went into Hades, the place of the dead, or the dark side of Sheol, hell. Is another way to call it that. It's uh, going to be similar to hell. It's the idea of fire and so forth. And Jesus taught about this. This is one of Jesus' stories. Uh, a lot of people call it a parable, but it's not necessarily a parable. This may just be a true factual account of what had happened because Jesus would know about that. Or it could be a parable. But you sit here and you look at this and you say, here and in so many other places, Jesus makes it very clear. When those who are not in Christ, who are not in the Father, who are not one with God, who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, when they die, they do not just by default go to heaven. They do not weigh it on scales and see if you're good enough and, well, as long as you lived a pretty good life and you weren't terrible, you end up going to heaven. That's not what this talks about. Jesus talked a lot about hell and that if you had not given your life to Jesus Christ and been forgiven of your sins, you would go to hell. And it talks about hell very much in the scriptures and some of the things about hell is what we'll talk about tomorrow. But Jesus said that it was a real place, not a figurative place, not like, well, we've had to go through hell on earth and that's all he talks about. And just when you die, you die. Hell down here is the only hell you'll ever know. That's not clear. That's clearly not what scripture says. What is taught in scripture is that when somebody dies apart from the Lord, when they die, they open up their eyes and they're in Hades or they're in hell, separated from God separated from everything that is good and in hell. Tomorrow we'll talk about, and I wanted to keep both these messages pretty short because they are very difficult to go through. Tomorrow we'll talk about what it means to be in hell. What's it like? What's so bad about it? What hell is like? We talked a whole week on heaven. I don't want to give a whole week to hell. I would be depressed by the end of the week, and I think everybody listening would too. But it was a question I've been asked by a few people is talk about hell and is it real and is it literal? The Bible makes it very clear that it is a real, literal place, just like heaven is a real, literal place, just like earth is a real, literal place, and that we will spend our time there if we do not know Jesus Christ. But the good news is, is this. Our closing song today is there is power in the blood, and we'll get to that in a minute. The blood of Jesus Christ can keep anyone from going there. God did not want anyone to go to hell. He did not create it for people. He created it for the devil and his angels that had fallen away from God, rejected God, rejected heaven. God said, I made hell for them, not for us. It is only if we act like the devil and he is our father and we live in rebellion and we turn our backs on God and we do not accept the blood of Jesus Christ as our salvation that we go there. You can accept Jesus Christ and have the power that comes through the blood of Jesus Christ by accepting him. Heavenly Father, I do pray today that we will 
accept the blood of Jesus Christ, that we will live in that blood, that we will let it cover our sins and make us holy and pure so that we can be with you forever and not go to hell, but escape hell and be with you. I pray that we will honor you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope that you like our closing song and it's a blessing to you. Hope to see you again tomorrow as we conclude the second part of the message. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood.